Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is jack-o'-lantern and I did not spare them. So I've got three iron fences popping up inside the card along with a raising jack-o'-lantern and skeleton and all sorts of spooky goodness. Now this one is going to combine five main dies, three from our new collection, our stocking pop-up, Halloween borders, and small script Halloween. But then I'm also going to mix in our iron fence pop-up and our skeleton and bat. I used three additional dies to make some decorator pieces. These would be pretty easy to use something out of your stash if you didn't have these specific dies. I'm going to make a landscape A7 card. So I need to start with a piece of cardstock, seven and a half inches by five inches, and I've scored it at a half an inch from the long end. And that little half inch tab, I'm going to make that a tapered tab by just taking my scissors and taking a little wedge off of each side. And then the other half of my card is just the size I need it to be, which is a seven inch by five inch piece. I'm going to line up those outside corners perfectly. Then I'm going to add a strong adhesive to my half inch tab. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. And then I'm just going to get that tab attached. So I had to do a five by seven landscape card in two pieces because generally cardstock comes in 12 inch long pieces and I needed 14. Our rectangles and labels crosshatch die set is sized to fit on a five by seven card. So I've cut the largest rectangle in the set, which does have the crosshatch pattern out of purple and then I've cut one additional one out of black. And then what I'm going to do is just take an inch off the long ends of the black rectangle and then glue that to the bottom of the purple one and then that will give me kind of a ground cover. Then I just repeat that process for the other large rectangle and then glue those inside the card. Okay, time to work on the pop-ups. So I've die cut the pieces for the stocking pop-up. This long piece from the stocking pop-up has five folds in it, and I'm going to find all five of those folds and fold them as a mountain fold away from myself. And then I'm going to return it back to flat again. And then for some distressing, I'm just going to use a coarse sponge and some black ink and add a little bit of distressing to the rectangular panels that are second from the end and then the back of the tapered tabs. Those are just the two panels on each end that will show in the finished card. So I'm not worried about the center panels at all. They're mostly going to be cut away and then covered with a fence. Speaking of the fence, I die cut three of them and then pounce them with black ink using that coarse sponge. I'm using very thin score tape around the perimeter of the open areas of the fence. So that's on the back and I'm going to put a piece of transparency over that. So that transparency piece is four inches long by an inch and three quarters high. What the transparency is going to do is make the back of the fence smooth. And that will be very helpful when I go to do the sliding part of the stocking pop-up so that that big jack-o'-lantern doesn't get caught up on any of those intricate parts of the fence. Okay, I'm going to use a some small tool to score the transparency just to the left of the center fence post. And then I'm going to fold the piece in half pretty side to pretty side, so basically a valley fold. I wish I could say I planned it, but I really didn't. The iron fence just happens to fit really nicely on that stocking pop-up right in those center two panels. Now, if you wanted to simplify this card, you could eliminate the transparency and just glue the fence right to the stocking pop-up mechanism. But I wanted to be able to see through the fence, so I'm going to make an alteration where I trim away the inside portion of those two panels, leaving myself just a thin border around the outside. And then when I glue the iron fence to that piece, then you'll see that the iron fence will cover that thin strip that I left top and bottom. Now I said glue, but I'm actually going to go back to that thin tape again because I am putting a transparency to it. So I do think transparency is like a dry adhesive better than a wet glue. Okay, so then now what I'm going to do is just peel up the liner from my tape around that perimeter and then just get that fence stuck down to it so that the fold in the fence lines up with the fold in the mechanism. Okay, so now I have my center fence ready to go. I just need to build the back sliding pop-up first. For the back sliding mechanism of the stocking pop-up, I've die cut both pieces out of the same color as my background. And I'm first going to find the five folds in this piece. 
Now the top two and the diagonal should be mountain folds and then the bottom two tabs should be valley folds. It is the bottom mechanism of the stocking that sets the location for the upper mechanism. So I've already figured out what that distance is going to be to give myself a good location for the fence. And that location is two inches from the bottom of the card. So I'm going to mark that on my center fold. Then I'm going to just mark the center of this long horizontal tab. In fact, let me make that a little darker. That's going to be my lineup spot. So the center of that long horizontal tab is going to line up with the pencil mark that I made in the card. And I'm going to glue that tab down. And while I'm gluing that long horizontal tab down, I'm also going to glue this shorter kind of diagonal tab. I do this in the flat position. So I'm going to line up my pencil marks and I'm looking for that long tab to be horizontal and I want the whole piece flat and then I have a notch in the piece that I can line up over the center fold of the card. So I like glue for this, both for the strength and also for the ability to slide things a little bit while the glue is still wet. You definitely need that notch directly over the fold. The sliding piece has one fold in it that I like to fold back and forth a few times to make it loose. And then these upper two tabs are the ones that get the adhesive. And there is a rounded section on the left that lines up perfectly with the rounded section of the slider. So I can just go in there and make sure that the curves line up on the left and that the bottom edge looks horizontal. And then once I have that attached to the two tabs, as I start to close the card, the pop-up will come up. I need to push the slider so that it is inverted and folding into the card the opposite way. And then now I've completed that sliding mechanism. Okay, now I can add the fence up over the top. And it's this little divot here on the side of the tapered tab that I use to align it with the lower mechanism. So I add my adhesive all over that last tapered tab on the right side of the fence. Then I'm going to flip that piece over and take that divot and butt it up right next to the lower mechanism. So that's how I get good placement. I can look along the bottom to make sure that it's good and horizontal. And then I'm just going to fold it in the center so that the other tapered tab ends up over the top of the first one. Then I can add adhesive to that tapered tab. Just holding everything flat, I can close the card and pick it up and move it to the other side. I'm going a little fast with this pop-up I know in this video, but that's because there is a full assembly video on the stocking pop-up. So you can go watch that other video if you need a slower take on the assembly of this mechanism. But once I get it attached, then I can invert that center fold now to be a valley again, and it will collapse down into the card as the card closes, and then it will pop up and the slider will come up as the card opens. Okay, now anything could rise up on that pop-up, right? So maybe a ghost or a skeleton or a big spooky tree. So whatever you want to use. But for our challenge, the theme was jack-o'-lantern. So I made a jack-o'-lantern using a circle from our circles crosshatch. That circle is about two and three eighths inch diameter. Then I took pieces out of character add-ons one to add the jack-o'-lantern face and the stem and actually just hand cut a leaf for it. Now placement is important for me because I did choose such a large item to go on the slider. That two and three eighths inch diameter, that's probably about as wide as I could fit something back behind that fence in the closed position. So I'm going to use a tape runner to attach it and that way I can move it if I need to. Um, glue would probably do the same thing, but I really don't know how many times I'm going to have to move it. So I'm just going to use a little bit of tape runner, get my pumpkin on there, see if maybe it's butting up against the fold on the left or against the side of the fence on the right and then adjust it accordingly. So I can go up, I can go down, you know, however I need to go to get a spot where the pumpkin can slide down into that closed position, you know, and not catch on anything. And that's why that transparency is really helpful because of those layers on the pumpkin, it could easily catch up with the intricacy of the fence if I didn't put the transparency there. I decided to put a giant moon on the left hand side also using those circles crosshatch. Now I had thought I would be inking it but I went to the scrap bin and I found a piece of yellow pattern paper that had all these different colors in it and I thought oh that's perfect. So I just die cut that large circle and I'm going to glue that down on the left side of the card. Now I'm going to work on the assembly of my two iron fence pop-ups. 
So for this mechanism, there is a long arm that comes in the piece. It has one fold out on the end. Then there is a sleeve that has two folds. And what you do is you work those folds and then glue that sleeve together. Once the sleeve is glued together, then I can slide it onto the arm and it should easily slide up and down that piece. And it doesn't really matter which way it goes, but I like to put the seam down. And I cut those two pieces out of my background color so that they would be disguised. For the fence itself, right next to the wide fence post on either end are some fold lines to be able to fold those wide fence posts over. And then you can see how it's going to arc. So for the one that's going to go on the right side of the card, then I need my adhesive on the right fence post and then the end of the arm is going to glue to the center of that fence post and it's going to come right to the edge and I'm looking at the triangles down the middle to make sure that it's straight and it's going right through the middle of the fence and what I can do is I can pop that little foot through that final triangle on the left hand side. Once again if this feels a little fast you can watch the assembly video for the iron fence pop-up and I will link it at the end of this video. So that foot tab is coming through the triangle. And then what I want to do is fold the foot tab down so that it's pointing towards the center of the fence and hold it in that position while I add some strong glue. Then that wide fence post is going to fold over and into that exposed adhesive. So the way this mechanism works is that that fence post on the left is going to open and close with the card. And as it does, it'll pull the arm through the fence and arc it. So what I'm going to do is butt that folded fence post right up to that fold that's created by the first mechanism and use that to animate the fence. So the adhesive is going to go on the side of the stocking pop-up mechanism. And then I'm going to just keep that nice and flat while I close the card and it will then attach the side of the stocking mechanism to that fence post. So see, I'm basically using the fold that is created by the first mechanism to animate the iron fence. Now, what I need to do to get this working is I need to attach the sleeve to the back of the card. So you don't ever use adhesive on the right fence post of the fence. It, that does never get glued down. It's actually the back of the sleeve that gets the adhesive. And then for location, I just open the card fully open. Then I can kind of just place the fence in the position I like and then push that sleeve down. So as the card closes, the arm butts through the sleeve and then flattens the fence. So you can see that that right fence post has to be able to slide. It does not have any adhesive behind it. Okay, now I'm going to work on the fence for the left side of the card. So once again, I just work the little foot fold that's in the end of the arm and then I work the two folds that are in the sleeve and I glue that together to make a sleeve and that just slides right on the end of the arm. Next I take the fence itself and I work the folds that are next to the wide fence posts on each side. So folding that basically pretty side to pretty side, valley fold. I'm folding the two wide fence posts so that the fence can arc between them. And then since this is going to be a left side fence, it is the left fence post that gets the glue for the end of the arm. So you always glue the arm out on the end that is you know, going to be on the side of the card that you want. And then the foot goes through the triangle. So just repeating the same thing, I'm just happen to be working mirror image. So you can see that my foot tab is now coming through the triangle on the right. I add my adhesive, I fold over the right fence post and into that exposed adhesive. And then now you'll see how it's going to arc. So the fence post that creates the arc is on the right this time since it's going on the left side of the card. And then I'm going to do the exact same process where I just butt it up to the pop-up. I add my strong adhesive to the side of the pop-up itself. So just going in there and adding that glue and then keeping everything nice and flat, I want to close the card and pick up that fence against the side of the stocking pop-up. Then I need adhesive on the back of the sleeve and I'm going to keep my card nice and open, arc my fence over, then I can make sure it's straight, slide my little sleeve out and press it down. 
So in this case, maybe I should have actually made the sleeve yellow so that it would be, you know, uh, disguised a little bit in front of the moon, but I didn't and I'm not going to uh, change it. <laughs> so I'm fine. I'm fine with just having that purple mechanism behind there. But if you really wanted to make it disguised more, you could have made the sleeve out of yellow. For the skeleton and bat die set, there is an assembly video, and all I'm using on this card is a skeleton and a cat. So I didn't use the bat on this one, and I've assembled that little skeleton and that cat. And then my thought was to attach those to the center pop-up so that they're extending out over a little bit of that purple mechanism that I can see. So I'm just going to use my adhesive for the skeleton on the side of the skeleton that is going to touch the pop-up and I'm going to let the majority of him stick out over the air and kind of disguise a little bit of that purple mechanism that's coming through my fence. And then I just need to check and make sure that I haven't created any catch points, but it's working great. Okay, now in the case of that center fence, because I didn't fold it right up the middle, in other words, right up the middle would have been through the center fence post. So I folded it just to the left side of that fence. So that means a little bit more fence is on the right. And that's why I'm using my smaller item, which is my cat on the right side, because less of that purple mechanism is visible on that side. So I'm using my smaller item over there. Now for the Halloween border set, there is a die that will cut a pumpkin border. I cut that out of black and then a die that will cut a jack-o'-lantern overlay. And I cut that out of orange and then I just glued the two together. And then now I'm just going to take a green pen and color in all the stems of the pumpkins. And instead of using this as a border, I'm going to cut it into individual pumpkins and then brush some ink around the edges of each one. And I decided just to space them up and down the fences, tucking them in behind the curly cues. So now I'm just going to go in and glue them into place. And it's only the center one that I have to watch the location to make sure that I'm not crossing the fold. The rest of them, there's no folds to get in the way. I can just glue them in behind the curly cues of the fence. But that center one, I just want to make sure that I get a good placement on it where it's not bending the pumpkin. Next, I cut the bat border out of the Halloween border set. That has five bats, and I can chop those into individual bats. So what's nice about those border sets is that they're five and a half inches long. They're easily extendable if you want to just keep going with them. Like let's say you had a 12 inch scrapbook layout or something but then you can also chop them apart and use them as individual items. The new small script Halloween set has three great, very small script greetings. So I'm going to use trick or treat on the middle fence. So that die set does come with shadows for those words, but you can also just use them individually. So I made mine a Halloween card, obviously, the theme was jack-o'-lantern, but definitely think about this idea of this triple fence with a slider in other themes. So this could be garden themed, maybe with an Easter bunny coming up on the slider, or it could be Christmas fences with cardinals and beautiful trees. Again, I definitely did not spare the jack-o'-lanterns. So that same jack-o'-lantern overlay border just done repeatedly on one of the rectangles from the rectangles and labels crosshatch. And then just a strip of thin ribbon and that happy Halloween from the small script Halloween set. This time I did use the shadows. And typically with my pop-up cards, I start with the inside where the pop-up is. That's how it's probably going to be displayed. So I make that as elaborate and wonderful as I want. And then I just use my leftover materials and the same dies and elements to create a simple lead-in on the front. I had such fun making this card and I really do think it would be great in other themes as well. But for my card, Happy Halloween, Triple Fence on the inside, Rising Jack-O-Lantern from behind the fence. It is a five by seven card landscape orientation, so it will mail in an A7 envelope. If you'll check the description box below this YouTube video, you will find supply links for what I used on my card, as well as a link to the blog post. And on the blog post, you will find photographs of this card, as well as links to all of the wonderful jack-o'-lantern inspiration by our very talented design team. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenburniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.